Hey there, hackers. So I had a question about how did I get a custom mouse cursor in Temple OS? The short and dirty version of it, you create a custom sprite and you reference that custom sprite when you override the draw mouse function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull in my virtual machine over here and let's just take a look and see what we can do. Okay, so let me just change the home directory and list it real quick. These are some shortcut keys I put together here. All right, so I've got a custom file here, draw custom mouse. What this does is this basically overrides the void function draw standard mouse. Now I just keep all the arguments on it the same and everything and you know, all I do in there is that I just put a custom sprite and then I call um, the graphics library and say draw the mouse and that equals the draw standard mouse which is the function which basically has the sprite in it which draws the sprite. Anyway, technical stuff aside that's pretty much it. So I actually go into this function and first thing I do is I insert a reference to my sprite. So if I go into raw text mode, it's easier for me to do it this way. You can see that you have your dollar signs and you have your sprite pointer. This is just the, you know, the text name of the sprite that shows up in the green thing. Then you have your bit index. So this is like the index that the sprite has in the, in the current file. And this is important for later what I'm going to show you here. So this is just like the sprite index of one. And that's kind of like what you're gonna be referencing in your function call. If you notice down here when it says sprite three where you're drawing it, you have to give it the bit index that you're referencing there. So just make sure that those two match with the sprite three and the one in this file. Um, the one in the other file, that's actually referenced at the end here with this number. And so you just do the pointer to it and then you just give it your absolute path to it, a comma, and then whatever the bit index of the sprite in its file is. Might not make sense here, but it'll make sense in just a second. So once I have that matching up in the function call and, and the dollar sign show you just in case if you need your syntax perfect and you're not really sure, that's what you would do. And that's all you would do is you would just call, you know, all your parameters that have been passed into it, which is the current mouse position, so it shows you where to start, where to draw it, and everything else. So that's that. So let's actually go to the file that I have, and it's in my sprites folder, so I'm just gonna do this, jump into sprites, and then I'm going to go to mouse cursor, which is the file that I referenced. So here you can see I have two sprites. Now I drew them using the sprite editor, and then these are just the pointers that I get from it, but this is where the bit index or whatever is important because you see I have my two sprites, number one and number two. Number one is not the one I'm using. I'm actually using number two in the virtual machine. So this right here is number two. You can see it actually matches up. Number one, it doesn't match that up. So this is where the comma and then the number that you have is the index. So what you could essentially do is you could have eight million different little mouse cursor files or sprite files in here including 3d ones and then you would just basically you know call whatever sprite by its index so you know the more sprites you add the more indexes you have and then thus you can refer to a different one so we see that this one up here is number one which is like really ugly and it looks like it's pointing down so let me show you how you how this all kind of works out so i'm going to go back to draw custom mouse where I overrode the draw standard mouse function and then I'm just going to go to right here where I reference this file and I'm going to change it to the sprite number in the original file notice how it changed right there okay so remember beautiful triangle ugly triangle so I'm going to save it and then let's just go ahead and Boot RAM, maybe. Can't, <laughs> I can't remember. Or was it reboot memory? Oops. 
Okay, well, you know what? I'll just do this the good old-fashioned way by restarting my virtual machine. Reset. Okay, let's start. Give it a second to draw. And then notice the ugly cursor pops up now where it's pointing downward. So that is basically what you would essentially be doing is you would, again, you would create your sprite file, then you would go and where it goes to the draw standard mouse function and you would basically create your override for it and then you would like put that file in like your startup script for your run home and make home and everything like that. That's where you'd actually put that. Let's go home. And make home. Yeah. So when you're doing your make home, you actually go in and you do an include, and then you link to your holy C file that calls like the custom mouse to do that. And you do that, you know, basically anywhere close to the end of it, that's fine. And that will load your mouse. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Have fun and howdy hacking.